Hello, in this video I'm making another bunker diorama out of a corn can. This time a bigger and more complex one in 70 second scale. After checking out enough stores for a suitable canned food, I decided on this can of corns. It suits nicely to make this out of something that you would store in an actual bunker in an actual catastrophe. So, empty the can, peel off the label, sprayed some isopropyl alcohol to soften the glue, but not really sure if it helped. Then cleaned off the glue gunk with the help of hobby knife as much as possible. I eyeballed for where the exact middle of the can was and then marked the cut lines. Once that's done, it's time to cut this baby in two. As a reminder, if you missed my first one, you can watch it by the end of this video or up there in your screen. After four circular cutting bits, I got done with splitting it in two. I then gave it a thorough sanding to make sure I get rid of sharp edges and clean off the aluminum debris. I taped both parts together to help keep it in shape while I'm drilling the holes for the hinges. Speaking of hinges, I made a trip to the hardware store and bought a pair of hinges that is cheap and thin enough, so I could bend them to the curve I need, and suitable bolts and hex nuts. Once cutting work is done, I drilled the holes for the bolts with various sizes of drill bits. At this point, the tin can is not as sturdy and tends to bend if I apply too much pressure while drilling. That's why I start with smaller drilling bits to bigger ones. Once that's done, I installed the hinges. Made sure the bolts and nuts are squeezed and tight fit. I glued these tiny magnets to make sure it won't open up accidentally when this diorama is complete. Cut and glued sticks to act as a handle to make opening this easier, and to cover up the vertical gap there and to add a bit of a decorative detail for the final result. Next step is to cover the both inside and outside bowl with watered down PVA glue. Then cover it up with baking soda. Without baking soda, paint job will be bound for scraping and scratching. Baking soda provides a nice texture for the paint to hold. Also gives it a more cement-like feeling. After it dried and I cleaned off the excess baking soda, and then covered this surface with CA glue to make sure the texture is as hard as rock. Next, I started working on the mid floor and the ground level section of the build. For this, I cut off two circles out of styrofoam for the ground level section, and two more from foam core for the base and mid floor of the bunker. I cut out a slit from one of the circles so the leather I'll build later could go through there and carved a small section out of the styrofoam circle to create an illusion that leather reaches to the surface. I primed the circles and the can in black. Then once primed circles dried, I started working on wooden floorboards. In order to create a grainy look, I scratched the sticks with the tip of the hobby knife. After that, I added a railing to the mid-floor leather slit. For the paint of the floorboards, I used Vallejo New Wood, Old Wood and Cork Brown paints, and randomly painted each board with each color to create a homogeneous result. After the paint, I applied a highly diluted black red paint to warm it up. Painted the railing with Vallejo natural steel. And applied a diluted black wash to finish these. For the can itself, I mixed a grey tone from cheap craft paints and painted it. I dry brushed bone white color craft paint on it both inside and outside. And glued the two floors inside of the can with the help of a plastic container. Yeah. 
To build an entry hatch, I used a piece of cardboard and various plastic bits. My mind was elsewhere and I almost forgot to paint the hatch, so quickly primed it before the glue, I covered the top surface floor for ground flock thread. Then I added more PVA glue on the bald spots and intentionally kept it thick here and there. Once the glue dried and I blown off the excess ground flock, I started painting the hatch with various colors. I wanted the actual opening part of it in a bright color. For that I chose Vallejo's Emeron thread. I didn't want the gray and red paint go to waste, so I mixed them up and applied it to the uh, bottom part of the hatch. In order to create a dirty peel to it, I applied blackwash and metal chipping effects heavily here. Once the paint dried, I applied more PVA glue and diluted PVA glue to prepare it for grass. For grass, I used my homemade darker color flock and store-bought grass. Okay, so to populate this diorama, I'm starting with carving deers to go on the surface. For this, I printed silhouettes of six deers and carbon copied them on these scrap plywood pieces. After that, I cut them out with a handsaw. Next, I sanded the excess sections of each deer, softened the edges, gave them the back and belly curves, etc. with various sanding and carving bits. Good thing I prepared extra deers, I lost 2 out of 6 during this process. So at this point, they look like, I don't know, oversized sheep I guess. They need antlers done. I decided to tackle the most delicate part of this with thin cut sticks and toothpicks. As expected, CA glue baking soda combination worked like a charm to keep the antlers in shape. From the printout to the card box. So for the paint, I used Vallejo New Wood old wood and corpora and to finish it I applied a diluted dark brown color on each one. Once the deers are done I start on the objects to be used in this diorama build. I start with the one piece leather that starts from the surface down to the basement. I used regular sticks for the steps and sandwiched them in between two skewers. Later I made handlebars for each side of it. I won't explain all the objects I made here. I only plan to make two bunk beds and the rest of the items I improvised on the way. Some crates, a pair of couches, a table along with four chairs, two lamps, a coffee table, two bookshelves with books and boxes stacked on each, a radio and a fridge. But to be fair, if I didn't have the Dremel sanding option, none of these objects would be paint ready. CA glue tends to leak here and there or brings out fibers of sticks which deform the final result of these. Next, I painted all these with a randomly chosen color. And to be honest, I got a bit of bummed when I realized I made the couches a bit off, off scale. They are smaller than they should be. So I plan to put them in the back side of the scene for when I finally glue them in their places, this mistake won't be in the focus. Before I was done, I applied some washes and filters to each one as usual.
For the bunk beds, I made mattresses, pillows, and bed covers for each bed out of Millipot. Then roughly painted them with light grey color. Couldn't get down to some areas since I didn't want to stain the wooden parts with grey paint and didn't want to retouch where I painted already. When it comes to actual population of this bunker diorama, I picked up random suitable figures from Airfix, Italy and Rebel Brands. These are irrelevant to each other, but I tried to choose poses that works with the scene. I primed them with Vallejo Grey Primer. Then the usual paint job using green brown, light grey, black red, leather brown, etc. As you might have heard me complaining about not being able to find civilian figures, this is an example. For this diorama I had to rely on soldiers or military type figures. I could have carved basic civilian figures close to the scale, but I can't really carve all that much detail. Instead could have designed my own figures and printed them out. So, as you might heard I started a Patreon program where you could help me invest in a resin printer so I could expand my options. Either way, these soldiers could have taken shelter in this bunker or maybe out of desperation they might have forcibly removed the civilian occupiers or just found it empty and started using it. I'll leave that up to your imagination while you're watching this. Now that the deers, objects and figures are ready, it's time to add details to inside of the bunker. I used straws I occasionally collect from food takeouts. Their corrugated parts are perfect to replicate 90 degree angles. Maybe it's me or just coincidentally we order food from the same or similar places. I very rarely receive these kind of straws. It's always regular non-bendable ones. I use these straws to cover the bolts and nuts connecting the hinges. In order to cover the ones on the other side, I put together some valve-like pieces from straw cutouts and jewelry bits. Although I had to remove the second and fourth from the top. Since I didn't think that they would be blocked by the objects I will place inside later. I also added some random plastic bits with somewhat interesting looks from my bin and glued them on the walls. I primed them with grey primer with as much care and focus as possible without smudging it on already painted sections. While waiting it to dry, I painted the wooden handles with wood grain color. Then painted the pipes and the walls with various colors. I painted the pipes sloppily to be honest. I diluted the black red paint too much and it naturally leaked on the wooden surface. Which was fine, there could be or would be leaks, suits and molding happening in a place like this. <laughs> or I'm just finding excuses, I don't know. Nonetheless, I fixed it by adding washes on the floor around these while I was adding leakage details on the walls. With paint dried, I started bringing all the pieces together. Pay attention to the couch of scale mistake I mentioned earlier. I realized this way too late into the build and didn't really want to remake the entire thing. So in order to keep it away from the eyes, I hid it in the backside of the bunker. 
Originally, I planned to put it right in front of the basement floor. With this placement of the figures, I tried to make it look like they are about to go to the surface for a uh, patrol or attend to an emergency outside. I originally wanted to plant one medium-sized tree on the surface, but as trees have as much roots in the ground as they have above it, it just didn't make much sense since I didn't build enough layers for surface section. Okay, so that's it for this build. I hope you liked it. I'd like to thank my first patrons who were kind enough to give me a hand. If you also would like to help me, you can find my Patreon link in the description or in the pinned comment. This is my second and most likely my last bunker in a candyra. It just got repetitive on the second one. Even if I'd make a third one, the only challenge would be to increase its size and populate it with more people and more objects. Maybe, I don't know. Let me know what you think of this. And I'll see you in the next one.